Hey friends, so it's another Jeep video. I'm working on my Copart salvage Jeep that I'm building. Um, so anyway, uh, last night I removed most of the engine. We're gonna remove a little more of the engine today. We're gonna start by taking this coil off because I just paid, it was actually $94 with shipping and tax. Uh, and I, I have a hunch it's very, very easy to break, so I don't wanna break it. And then I'm gonna go after the starter. You gotta get that out of there. And I'm gonna see if I can get the wiring harness off. I've decided I'm gonna pick it up by these studs that that go down to the um, the head. Uh, online says that's a great place to pick it up from. Looks like it. I'm gonna disconnect this harness and see what I need to disconnect over here and try to lift this out as much as a unit as I can. Uh, I am gonna have to take the exhaust, uh, the upper cats off and um, you know, we'll just see where we get on it today. Um, not really in a hurry, and I do have uh, this clutch is shot, so I've loosened the fan a little bit, but you can see the clutch rocks independently, and it's probably the original clutch, so I'll have to get a tool or make a tool to hold these bolts so I can, it's a screw on crutch and it'll have to be broke loose. Well, that ain't today's project, kids. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, I'm going to just keep an after it and, um, you know, I've got a bent jack shaft on the, uh, steering and you can see that the frame is bent here and it pulled this side over. I think the sway bar is shot. Uh, my frame guy wasn't so sure on that. We'll see. I think the frame bar is shot. The upper, the uh, track bar is definitely bent. You can see where it made contact with the, uh, the pumpkin and, um, you know, we got, a, we got a bunch of damage down there. So and the reason we're pulling the engine out is to give the frame guy space to work on the frame because he's going to have to heat this up a little bit when he pulls the, the wrinkle out. And um, and that's OK. I, I, you know, Jeep says you shouldn't section and you shouldn't heat it up. But I think Jeep would also say you're not supposed to cut the frame in half and and weld new parts on when it rusts out from salt because their engineers had their head up their ass. Uh, and didn't put in drain holes. So I, I think it'll be just fine. Um, we may need to reinforce the frame at the point where the, the worst of the bend is. Uh, we're gonna see what that looks like. And if I have to weld it, I have to weld it. Um, I've got a really nice uh, rig for welding. I've got TIG, MIG, a gas and stick, uh, I mean gas and wire fed. Uh, I, this would be a gas weld. Uh, this would be, you know, MIG gas or uh, SMA as opposed to FMA, which is flux metal arc welding. Um, but, uh, you know, there's there's a point for every kind of weld. Um, flux core seems to be just messy, and I like gas uh, shielded better, especially in my garage where I don't have any wind. So um, anyway, we're going to get after it. And, um, you know, one of the things we're going to do while the engine is out is we'll probably preemptively replace the thermostat, the water pump, although that water pump looks like it's been replaced, and, um, and the, the clutch. And I don't know if this fan can be bent back. I'm going to let the YouTube, I, I want to ask my armchair mechanics, let me know in the comments you think this should be bent back and kept. Uh, there's another bend there. Those are the two that did the damage to the radiator. Um, so you you know you well, you can't really see it because it's down here, but you can see it took a nice chunk out of the radiator. Um, I don't know. You know, it's a pain in the ass to get two parts, so probably better to replace it. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. In the meanwhile, we're, we're going to get busy on this, and uh, I have yet to look at the manual on how to take this apart. I got really good at dealing with these. I used to, in 91, my first truck was a Toyota uh, 4x4 um, regular cab, and it had a uh, had 22R engine in it, and I got so good at taking that 22R engine out. Factory manual said four something hours, and I, I had that down to like two and a half hours two hours so anyway without further ado we're gonna start disconnecting stuff and get after it so uh, i'm gonna switch back to time lapse mode while i'm on top i'm gonna um actually you know what i'm gonna go underneath first and i'm gonna use these lights to add some light down there if you're curious about these lights i've got a video review of them these are awesome dewalt 20 volt or 12 volt uh, cordless lights. 
They're bright, bright, bright. You're, you're just going to be shocked when I put these under here and light them up. It's going to give me lots of light to work. And that's going to make my life easy. It's probably going to blind you guys on the camera. They are very easy to adjust. And they were bought partly for this project. So let's get after it. Okay, friends, so I need to work on getting this exhaust out of my way. I don't know if it really needs to come out or not, but Jesus Christ, what a pain in the ass this is to get to. Really? So I'm going to put the camera here, and I'm going to see if this will give me enough To work on. Oh, God. Push that out of the way. So, our goal is to get some P Blaster up in here because I think it's going to be a pain in the butt to work on this. And at the same time, I don't want to spray my face, so I'm going to scoot back. Ah, yeah, all right, I'll be right back. I gotta figure this can out. Okay, so this P-Blaster has a throttle on it, and it's just really touchy. If you have it over towards the minimum, it locks it, and you gotta have it halfway on to get anything out of it. 
So as I was saying, these bolts are a pain in the ass to get to and part of my goal is not to spray myself. I don't want this in my eyes, but I need to get these ready to come out. So the throttle's nice. <clears throat> I have no faith that these are going to come out easily. I think they're going to fight me the whole way. So I'm also going to turn around and do on the other side. There are, the, so this runs around the engine. I mean, yeah, it's just, I mean, I get it. They're trying to create clearance, but what a pain in the ass design. Um, so I'm going to have to take the shaft out anyway to get to it. There's just no nice way. I, I wasn't going to do the shaft tonight. Um, so anyway, let's move over to the other side and give that a little douching. Now, in case you're wondering, I'm not crawling around underneath here because I really don't trust this. I, I, my transmission mount is, is pushed back. I've got one good engine mount on the passenger side and the engine mount on the driver's side is broke. I don't know what the hell's holding the engine up over there and I don't want to be under it if it decides to drop two or three inches. So I'm being really careful. But despite that, back here, I have some bolts on the other side of the catalytic converter. Something only... Oh, hey, wait a second. I can get to them over here. Hey, that's cool. But I gotta be a contortionist, and I can't be a contortionist and hold the camera. So... Ah, my little... Captain Stupid mount is wearing out. Alright, you guys are just going to have to look at this from an angle. I'm sorry. I really am. one now let's see how we can get to the other to get it again you just you know part of the problem here is I'm old and I can't I can't get my glasses in here where I can see anything and the other tool See if we can hit it from under here. Yay! Well, while we're at it, uh, I gotta get that side from the other side. So if I have to get to these bolts, I've at least hit them with some pea blaster, which should soak in and make them a little easier to live with. I feel like I should take more off this thing while I'm under here tonight, because I'm already dirty and greasy and I need a damn good shower. I don't know. So I'm thinking about taking this inspection plate cover off and trying to assess how much damage I have back here. I don't know. 
I mean, you know, it's a Jeep engine, so it probably leaks back here, too. I don't know if that's bad or not. I, I plan to replace the rear main seal while I'm, when I have the engine out. There's four bolts to hold this in. Well, three, and I don't know if I can get, to, I don't think I can get to these with power tools. But they don't look like they're very big. All right, so I'm gonna P-blast those over there. So, be right back. All right, that'll make my life easier when I do decide to take those out. And I feel like I'm gonna to need to do something here. Oh, I don't see. I am getting myself into a hell of a lot of trouble back here. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to get to these bolts. This side won't be so bad, but the other side is gonna be a certified nightmare. <sighs> oh well, we'll fight our way through it. But yeah, this front drive shaft I think actually is bent a little bit, so I was gonna take it out and take it to a drive shaft shop and have it checked. Uh, I noticed at one point when I had the camera under here, I could see it wobble a little bit, and I don't wanna see it wobble. Um, you know, I'm hoping maybe they can straighten it out, but if they can't, I could just buy another one because it's only money and it's a Jeep. So just open every pocket. Uh, yeah, anyway, I shouldn't be so bitter about it, but it is what it is. Um, so... You know, I don't know if I'm going to jack with these or not tonight. Um, but the drive shaft has to come out and the exhaust really needs to be out of my way in order to uh, do what I want to do. Um, and honestly, the body shop is going to need access in here. And the more this crap is out of here the easier it is for them to straighten the frame out right in here and do their magic. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not bitter about it. I just, you know, it just needs to happen. And uh, I wanna pull the engine out, but I wanna work slow and smart. So it's taken me a few days to do it. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Let me think about this. If I'm going to jack... Yeah, I'm going to jack with it. Because, well, it's one more thing that's out. So let me go get a wrench. Now, if you're wondering about these lights, these are the DeWalt lights that I bought. And... No, it's not a 5 8 It's the next size down. So it's 9 16 I'll be right back. Let's see if I can find that. This is a perfect application for ratcheting box wrenches. What the fuck? It's metric. What the hell? All right. Fifteen millimeter metric. Ah, oh, what the? Oh. Oh, well, that I'll get something heavier.
So I have a wobble extension somewhere, but I can't find it. So hopefully this will give me the clarity. Okay, so it needs something bigger. Okay, sorry for the noise in the background. It's just hard to find the tools sometimes. And of course now it doesn't want to fit. Let me find a shorter extension.
All right, time for a breaker bar. That's impressive. Needless to say, access down here sucks, so oh, it would be really darling to have a lift about now. There we go. I can't get that one in there. Let's see if this will back off somewhat nicely at this point. Wow. Can't believe how hard that was on there. Let me go to the other side and see what I'm dealing with over there. These just shouldn't be on here so hard that they require a massive amount of force. I don't think. I really don't think I can get in here with this, but we're going to try. I don't think I have enough space. things have happened in my life. Amazing. Absolutely amazing and no clearance. No idea why these are on here so hard. Wow, Man, this is crazy. Oh, let me get another wrench.
All right, so that's what it should do. It should just break loose and then unscrew. same size. asking yourself why isn't he using the ratchet box wrench and that's because I found that putting excessive pressure on these will very quickly destroy them and when you're using a second box wrench for leverage you're putting a lot of pressure in place there we go and this little maneuver here is really hard on my hands they cramp up almost immediately. All right. So, the fastest way to store these is on it. And then we'll put it over there on the sacrificial piece of $60 plywood. So there is our flywheel substitute. not called a flywheel when you have a torque converter. Um, I can't remember the name of it actually. That's embarrassing. But whatever. So I mean that's four more bolts that have been fought out of the way. Uh, there's four bolts that hold the engine and transmission together and um, the exhaust promises that it's going to be its own special battle from hell and we need to do the um, drive shaft, but I just wasn't going to do it right this second. I, I really wasn't. I was going to wait and do it later. And I still may. Because we're definitely going to need the drive shaft out of there to get the tools up there to do battle with the fasteners from hell. And the fasteners from hell down here by the, the lower cap. You know. You know, it would have been so easy to put another connector right here and make this, you know, I mean, by putting the upper and lower cats into one assembly, it just makes it crazy expensive to replace. Yet, this is the same company that, you know, wants to save 30 cents by eliminating, you know, things that are useful. doesn't make any sense to me. It just tells me that whoever designs this never had to work on it. Because if they did, they wouldn't do what they're doing. But I guess they don't care because, you know, when you go into the Steelership, the Steelership just charges you by the hour. So to them, something that takes eight hours to do is just more profitable, even though it's inefficient as hell. Ah, uh, corporate America. If you can't screw the customer, then it's not very good. Anyway. I see bolts on the back of this. About, I, yeah, I keep wanting to call this thing a balance wheel, but that's not really what... It, there's a name for it. I wonder if it's bolted to the torque converter. Oh, well, that'll be a pain in the ass if it is because then I'll have to turn the engine over somehow to get to it. I see what looks like about five bolts up here. Mm. It's been a minute since I've messed with a uh, automatic transmission vehicle. 
And if I had my druthers, I would have bought a vehicle with a six-speed manual in it. Because I can work on a manual transmission. Pull that out, pull it apart, lay all the parts out, replace what looks like it's worn or beat up, put it all back together, call it a day. Automagic transmission is just a little bit more complicated for this whole boy. Anyway. So, next up, I think... I don't see anything else that's worth messing with, although I do want to explore some stuff on the other side. So I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go wash my hands, and then I'm going to come back and switch sides. I just want to get all this oil off my hands, because otherwise it's going to go every damn place. But I saw something up there behind one of the catalytic converters, and I want to try and get it, because I thought it was just really interesting. Actually, you know, I wonder if I could reach it from here. I saw what I thought was a tool, and I want to know what the hell it was. Oh, I feel it again. What the hell is it? Oh, there it is. What is it? Oh, it's a flashlight. What the hell is a husky flashlight doing? Does it still work? I don't know, but it spent some quality time back there behind the catalytic converters. That's hilarious. Ooh. I'd say that's toast. But this will take an 18650. Okay, so we gotta go we gotta see if this works because well I mean, what are the odds that it would spend that much time that it melted some of the aluminum. It was down on that engine for a while. Anyway, that's kind of fascinating. So let me go wash my hands and I'll think about what I want to do next. I mean, it's only almost midnight. What could I possibly want to do besides work on my Jeep? Hmm. <sighs> yeah, sleep's overrated. I'm also looking at my motor mounts, figuring out how this engine's actually going to come out of here.
Okay. So, the next logical thing is I need to put some scribe marks on my um, drive shaft before it starts to think about coming out. I don't know how well that's going to go. Mainly because I just painted it with pea blaster. If I'd painted it beforehand, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. All right. Well, let's see. We were going to check the. Well, there's no way those are 10 millimeter. amazing to me that the upper control arms are crushed and the lower ones appear to be more or less just fine other than some you know love marks from having been out in the real world So this is Walmart's finest 99 cent paint. And it's at, well actually it's fingernail polish. This stuff. LA Colors. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Oh, sorry. And all you guys saw was my back. So we'll try and do better over here. So I don't think there's a way to mark that one. like an eight or a seven millimeter. Let, let me t get my 10 on jack.
This also could be a 5 16 and that's what it is, it's 5 16 So let me get the tool to do that. So I'm going to come in from the top on these at first. Okay, so I'm going to see what I can get away with. The bolts that I need to deal with are back up on the other side of this. Although I can see them from back here, I can't really get wrench in, I don't think. I cannot get a wrench in there or a ratchet. Let me see if I can do this with a wrench.
Hmm. Really, what I need is a longer wrench. Bust these loose. All right, let me go see what I can find. So I'm going to see if my quarter inch tools can get in here. Sure doesn't feel like it. Uh. Yes, I can. I can get in on the top. So. hand got tired. So first thing I did is I broke all the bolts loose and now I'm going to remove two of them on opposing sides and then I'll deal with the last two. And so that I don't lose that wrench and throw it at somebody on the road, I'm going to take it out of there. What do I mean by throw it on somebody at the road? I had a bump and it'll fly out from under the Jeep and do bad things. I did that once to somebody with a fancy car. Had a whole bunch of gravel up on the transmission skid on my YJ and an asshole was tailgating me. So I tapped the brakes real hard and, oh, what do you know? All that gravel flew out of there. Boy, I'll tell you what, he got off my ass. Probably ruined his paint job, but I don't care. Little dick people with asshole cars are annoying. 
And yes, if you drive a super fancy sports car or a hyped up truck that's been jacked up, it's a it's just a sign you're compensating for something else that's probably missing. So this is queer. Ouch. I just don't want to lose those. And in case you're wondering, I, I could kind of see through here. Um, it would be wonderful if I actually had access up in there, but that would probably make too much sense. Remember to watch your fingers when you do this because this stuff will get loose at about this point. That's screw number three. This is probably one of the few times I've been grateful for quarter inch uh, ratchets. There's not much they're good for. And these DeWalt lights have been an absolute fantastic addition to my tool set. Alright, so there's that. got more bearing caps that need to be secured. Alright, not bad. So, let's pause and clean up. All right, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed these videos. Remember to subscribe, like, and let me know what you think is good, stupid, and otherwise in the comments.